the objective of this training is to provide you the basic understanding of the following things like uh, what is Splunk, how to use Splunk, and then the creating dashboards, alerts, and reports. There are some other things as well which we will cover later. So, yeah, so let's start with the what is Splunk. So, the first module is uh, start searching where we will discuss about the Splunk and the search app and the basic searches of Splunk which we can use. So, let me uh, show you the Splunk tool first. So here's the Splunk tool. Uh, I will uh, just tell you about the Splunk tool what it does. So it is basically it is a log analyzing tool, a log analyzing and monitoring tool which we use to monitor our data and uh, for the uh, fast searching of the data if we want to uh, use our data in a dashboard or reports or alerting. So we can start it, uh, we can download it from the uh, Splunk site. It is free for 500 MB gig, uh, MB. So uh, we can use that trial version for the training and later then we can uh, buy this license from Splunk if we need more data in our Splunk to be recorded. So the initial uh, password of uh, this Splunk is change me. Admin is the user. So once you uh, add admin and change me password then sign in it will ask you to change your password so like uh, let me put the password training once you add a new password then you can save the password here and it will all set to use so this is the UI of Splunk tool where you can search data and you can uh, also add the inputs so basically Splunk use uh, different inputs like file inputs and database inputs uh, as well as the uh, event logs of the system and performance log so you can add any kind of input in Splunk it will index data from uh, the input which you provide and then uh, it can it will show you the data on the search scheme so let me uh, let me add a uh, let me show you the indexes where it is stored. So this is the main menu of Splunk where you have different uh, options like uh, data inputs, uh, indexes. These are the basic ones. So if we want to create a new index, then we can click on index, and from here we can create a new index with any name like uh, training. So let's save that index. This is the uh, new index which we created, training index. And it is uh, storing in the, storing at this location. In program files, Splunk, where live, Splunk, and then training index. So all the indexes will be stored at this location, whatever index will be created. And now we can use this index to input the data. Like uh, let, let me go to settings and data inputs. Using data inputs, you can input any kind of data in your uh, in your Splunk application. So here are the different options. Like uh, if you want to add event logs or uh, files. If you want to add basic files like the uh, log files or the text files, then we can click on file and directory. So here is the option to create a new input by clicking on new button. You can create a new input. So uh, we can skip the preview. We don't want to see preview of data. So here is, here is the path 
option means you can provide the your uh, log file path here so let me create a uh, test file so that we will uh, see how it will end up I'll save it. I'll save it in the C column. I'll save it in G. So the text file name is like then. So let's add this file in our ask plan. So here we can provide full path G and the name of the file. Training of the So here we started with the basic file, just test file. In the future I can show you the uh, some show you some uh, more complex files which Splunk will store. So here we provide the path of the file and then there are more settings which we have to give like uh, the, uh, like the first uh, option is on the host what we want so it will be constant value always for the files so we will select constant value and the host uh, whatever uh, host we have like uh, we can provide here the server server name from which server file, this file is coming so from this file is coming from my local system though so I will give it uh, as a local host and then the source type uh, source type is basically uh, used to uh, just identify the source of the source of the data what kind of data is there so we can add a manual source type as well so source type uh, this is the training test file so we can get the training test yeah, source type we can search our data using this source type easily which I will show you later also uh, here we can see the indexes which we create like we created training underscore index so we will we want to store this file in training index so we will select this if we will select uh, on the default then it will go to main index which is the default index of uh, Splunk but uh, if because this is our personal data so we create a new index and add it in a new index so just save that that's all we need to give See here you can see that file is added and it is now ready to use in Splunk. So now data will continuously come to this Splunk uh, index from this file. So it's a real time. Uh, it will continuously come to the index. Uh, whether you will make any, whenever you will make any update in that file it will update you, your index in Splunk so now let's go and see uh, the indexes see here you can see that uh, how many events are added there is only one event added so it is showing and the earliest event is from uh, at this time and the latest event is of this time So whenever a new event will come, it will update the latest event. So now I'll, I'll show that how we can search our index or our data. So just click on the Splunk button 
left hand corner and it will give you a, it will give us a text box where we can write uh, some kind of regular expression of some kind of filters we can add here so as we told, as I told you already that uh, there is a source type which we created and an index so we can search our data using source type or as well as using index that, that's uh, use with index index equal to training underscore index this is the index that we created so here is the option if we want to see all time data then we will not change anything and we will just click on click here See, now that your data is here in this plan and it, uh, we created a couple of rows here so it is showing you two rows and it was at the same time that's why it is showing the same event uh, so from there you can you can see that we added host as local host source as source it, source will show you the full path of the file and the source type which we added training test we can use the, this source type as well for uh, searching our result searching our data so this is how this is how Splunk works let me uh, go to the next option next slide option so this is the search app or we can uh, discuss the questions later as well at the end of the session so uh, we have covered here the in, uh, that introduction of his plan and the search app and the basic searches I show you that how we can use uh, search and to identify the contents of the uh, search results I, I show you here that here is the contents of the search results so if you want to just see test 2 then you can click test 2 and it will show you the test 2 result so it will show all the events of test 2 currently there is only one event so it is showing test 2 uh, let me add another another row in that file so that we can differentiate the filters So here are two uh, rows we added more. Let's save it and then close. Now up, uh, is it, now it will come in this uh, index because the file is updated. So that the new two rows will come here and it will show you here. See, here is here are the uh, those couple of rows which we added. So if now we want only test 2 in the search result then we can click, click here and it will only show you the test 2 uh, wherever the test 2 uh, data will, will find. So next, uh, let's go to the next option. Next is how to control a search job. How to control a search job. Here are the option to control the search job. Suppose uh, your search heavy is having a lot of data like in weeks. So when you click here on the search, there is a option stop option which can which will stop your search and it will show you the rows which has it has already identified. You can also pause your search, which you can resume after a couple of minutes if you want. And here is the op stop option. And these are the options of exponential which we will discuss later in the later slides. 
also here is the option to control your job if you only want to see the result which came in last 15 minutes or last 60 minutes so here are the different options like if you on, only want to see today's results if you should see today's results and similarly there are different options if you can use. also you can control it using uh, date range if you want to see any specific date like uh, if your if your event came in 2014 or 16 May you can add 2014 and then apply it will show you the 2014 results we can don't have any 2014 results that's why it's fine. also there is an option of date and time range so here I show I, sh I have shown you that uh, 16th May 2014 here you can also provide the time of 16th uh, 2014 so if you want only one hour data then you can provide here earliest and latest Similarly, there are different options which you can use to see your data. Because if you use all time, then uh, and your uh, data is very huge, it is around in 20 GB or 30 GB, then it will take too much time to come up. So that's why and there is an option which uh, Splunk has given to uh, control your search using the different presets. And you can also see the third, five minutes or thirty minutes window. Okay, so uh, these are the options which I have shown you, like uh, how to control your job with uh, different time frames. Uh, so we have covered this: control a search job and decide the time range of a search. Now the next option is to use the output of a search to refine your search. So. That also I have told you uh, uh, that uh, we can control it using different filters. Like I have, uh, I show you that test two filter. So it will show you only test two records. Uh, let's go to all time because we don't have that much data, so we can use all time. So here you can use if you only want to see test one. Sorry, test three then you can see test 3 you can add test 3 as a filter and then click enter it will only show you test 3 events not the test 1 or test 4 so that is how you can control your uh, data the other option which i want to show you is the uh, licensing option here you can see uh, you can see that how much uh, data you have currently like uh, if we show you the daily volume of your data 500 MB you can index 500 MB every day because it's a, it's a free license of Islam uh, also it will show you that how much volume you have used today so we did not have much uh, data today so it is showing 0 MB only just two events so here how how you can see that how much data is left for today so you can control your uh, uh, data search accordingly and you can control your inputs so if we if we need more uh, we need to index more data then we need to buy a license from this plan so they will give you the license of around 20 gig 30 gig whatever you want also this is a trial license so it is showing you trial license group and here here you can change license group once you have uh, the full license so we, uh, we can change enterprise license but we don't have a uh, full license then we we'll use trial license also on at the moment yes cancel it uh, the next option is uh, is the access controls where you can add a new user of your Splunk so you can click on users click on new and click that and add the user uh, username what you want like uh, 
I'm giving key advice same password and then save here if a new user is created with the name of T Agarwal it has the only user access while up the previous user which is admin it has admin admin role so let's log out from here and then log in with the T Agarwal user It allowed you to enter in Tiagua, this Tiagua, and here, here you can see the difference in user and admin. So user will only have to uh, search the results. He will not get uh, access to add or modify any data, any data inputs or create any indexes. He don't even have, uh, he doesn't even have uh, to create a new user access. So here we get by training underscore test. So uh, it will not allow him to see any data until we will not give him the uh, role of training underscore test in that permissions to use that in that. So this is how the user works. Once we will provide him uh, this index uh, permission, then he will be able to see the data which we added. From here, uh, you can also edit our account if you want to change anything. Like we want to change our password, then we can change the password. So let's log out from here. Well, does not have much permissions here. And we will go with admin again. So these are the basic uh, options which we use in the today Splunk activities. There are other options like uh, event types, text fields, lookups, forwarding and this thing, which, uh, which is the higher level thing which we will discuss in the later slides. 